moving to order. Focus of meeting, we're going to discuss negotiations with unions, facility plans, and Raven update. We have also a, uh, we're going to talk about the community outreach of the board, do board work after, at the end, after our executive sessions. Is someone willing to do the evaluation of the meeting? I know, Ann, you did it last time. Mm -hmm. One of the three of you do one this time. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, we have no community engagement tonight. So let's start on uh, the review of the wellness policy. This is a federally mandated yeah. federal language, right? Or is, is there something that's unique to us? Uh, no. There was, um, we talked to, at the last meeting, they did the food audit. They came in, they usually look at a school or two um, every year. And one of the findings that they had um, was the fact that we had left them actually handing hand oh, this okay. out to us. Is this the, new? I have one in our packet. Yeah. yeah. So this has the, the, the additional language in it. Oh, okay. Um, it was missing some wording uh, from Healthy Hunger Free Kids <laughs> Act of 2010. And so if you flip to the second page, the wording um, based upon talking with the Agency of Education and kind of doing a review of that act, uh, Ms. and Red there in D&E. Um, it mostly deals with food that is served outside of the regular school food program. Um, so any kind of, they call them the smart snack snacks. So everything's got to meet their smart snack nutritional guidelines is the, is the big thing. And that includes vending machine, it looks like. Yeah. And also that if we have entities that are coming in from the outside, you know, sports teams and, and whatnot that are, are doing fundraisers. You know, trying to promote with them that, yeah, you know, do some advertising, but advertise for the, the small snacks. Um, so those are the two pieces that we're missing a lot of So we were in compliance with this, even, you know, besides the language, as yep. far as what we're providing? Everything, everything else was, was, at least in terms of this policy, everything else was in, in compliance. Um, I think we had talked a little bit at the last time um, about the food audit is that there were, it was mostly paperwork things. You know, you, 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 is. do you have the right form on the refrigerator to mark the temperature every day? It was things like that. Um, but this was a, a little bit bigger because it has to come to the board for approval. And I believe you need two readings of it before it can be approved. So this would be the first. First reading? Yeah. Okay. So just to confirm, the um, vending machines now have been updated to reflect this in they're, the schools. They're okay. supposed to, yeah. Yeah, so it wasn't, the issue wasn't with the vending machines themselves, it just was, we were missing the language in our wellness policy. Okay. Um, that's required with that act. Any other questions? So we'll approve this at the next meeting then. Yeah. Okay. Next, uh, negotiations with unions. Uh, teachers um, are currently at impasse. Um, they had started off asking for an 8% increase. They did move a little, but not too much. I think they got down to 6%. Um, in the last session, uh, the discussion kind of settled on this idea as we asked them in principle, you know, if they wanted to move forward, you know, that you would agree to be in the comparables range. Comparables um, is anywhere right now from 2.7 to 3.5. Uh, usually averages out of right around 3%, and they weren't willing to agree even in principle to that. Mm -hmm. um, so now we're in the pass. Uh, the meeting um, is scheduled for May 8th, the first of the mediator. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they were holding, so it was just salary that was sort of the def def we had, Yeah, time. we had talked back and forth in some of the language pieces that they wanted, um, but it really kind of came down to the point where it was like, if we can't agree on salary, the rest is moot because you got to know this, because some of the language pieces may have a salary impact. So right. um, we're trying to get that out of the way. So hopefully, hopefully it won't be in, in mediation for too long. And who covers that expense for the mediation? Uh, both sides, <coughs> fifty fifty, and it's usually it's usually pretty expensive. I think min minimally probably ten grand. Uh, so it's so yeah, no, five thousand each mm -hmm. or ten grand per side. Yeah. Okay. Uh, five thousand each to start. Yeah. But that's usually the minimal. And is that still done here locally, or do you have to go somewhere? Okay. Uh, the plan is to actually be, be here. Right at this table. Yeah. yeah. I thought you were going to 
skip mediation. No. We were trying to, um, you know, so the idea that Paul had was maybe we can skip the mediation, go right to fact finding, and uh, we can't go out of order unless they agree. No. Um, and further, we're finding out that none of it's binding anyway. So the basically the only difference between the meetings that we were having and uh, having the mediator there is now we have somebody running back and forth between the two of us as opposed to us just sitting face to face and having the discussion. And the teachers were not willing to skip mediation then. Fine. Nope. So. Um, did, did you get either Paul or Melody to go with you that day? You did? Okay. Yeah. Actually, I think we had all three. I eventually showed up. Back. Yeah. I just can't get here when it starts. Yeah. And Paul, Paul's usually, usually there, too. He's usually there right off the bat. Um, we did reach a tentative agreement with the support staff, mm -hmm. um, which I can put out to you and talk about a little bit. Um, so both sides have agreed um, at the end of the last session together. So the next step would be for the larger board here if they decide to approve. And then they also have to bring this in front of their constituency and have them approve as well. And when are they meeting with their constituency? That I do not have a date yet. I was emailing back and forth a little bit with, uh, with Deborah today. Uh, April 24th date on something. That may be it. Um, so with the support staff, when we took a look at the comparables, they were below. Mm -hmm. you know, one of the executive limitations requires me to, to get them up to the comparables in, in competitive. And this does that. Um, there were two places that got some pretty good increases. The first was the, the hiring grid. Um, we upped that. We're trying to get it as close to $15 an hour for everybody as possible. Um, one of the reasons being is it's probably going to be mandatory um, sooner than later. Um, we had three areas where people were hurting a lot. And that was the cooks, um, the secretaries, and the custodians. Um, and so we brought them up significantly to try to help um, as well with a lot of the turnover that we've been having in those positions. Um, in addition, the folks that are off the hiring grid. So the hiring grid determines where you start when you walk in the door. After that, your increases are basically, basically the um, cost of living increases that the board gives them. You know, typically is, is, is 2 to 3% per year. Um, what we're looking at for everybody else who is off the grid is 4.25%. Oh, wow. Um, to kind of get them up there in that, that, that comparable range and competitive. Um, this does not break the bank in terms of what we had set aside in the budget um, for good. negotiations. It actually comes in right where we wanted it to, um, which was good. Did the negotiating team think that this was going to be accepted by the membership? Yeah. Great. So do we need now to approve this? Uh, what you could do is make a motion um, to approve it as part of the consent agenda. Okay. Do we have a motion to approve the uh, support staff offer um, as part of the consent agenda? Mm -hmm. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so we'll... Um, now it's in the consent the, agenda too. Okay, great. Oh Sorry. good, it's in there. So, yep. so we'll do we'll a proper vote on that. Um, all right, Maybe. anything else as far as the negotiations with unions go? Uh, no, we do have another one from the emergency posting that we did that we should probably talk about as part of board governance, and that's the treasurer. Um, right. Unless folks had other, right. other questions. Um, yes. Let's. Does anyone have any other questions about the negotiations, either with uh, the teacher or the um, staff? Paul, Paul, so you can grill him too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're the only one. Pick it on you. <laughs> All right. So. Talk about the, the appointment of a new uh, OSSD treasurer. So we had spoken um, together a few times, and it had come up in the audit report that the, the current treasurer that, that we had um, was not keeping up with the reconciliations. Um, one of the things that they do is it's an outside body that comes in and takes a look at our payable accounts, any money that's, that's going out the door, um, and make sure that everything is balanced the way that it should. It's a, it's a, a check. Um, to make sure that there's nothing funny going on with the money. Um, they also, as a secondary part of the position, they also sign um, any of the actual live checks that go out the door. Um, 
the person that we've had for the last uh, year and a half is a great person, um, but was not keeping up on the reconciliations. Um, we are typically anywhere from six to nine months behind. Um, we spent probably the last six months, um, Robin especially, talking with her, trying to get her up to speed, helping out a little bit to try to get the rec reconciliations done. Was not happening um, because it put us in liability in terms of risk, um, and especially because it will probably show up in the audit report in May. Um, I stepped up, asked the person to resign, um, and she did. And so we are in a position right now um, to hopefully ask the board's indulgence to approve um, having uh, Teresa Godfrey, uh, who was the person who was voted in as treasurer to begin July 1st, um, to step in at this point in time, um, and you can appoint her. Um, and it would be nice to get that done because we've got nobody to sign checks right now. Or and she, and she is willing to be appointed early. Okay, that's the okay. other piece of this was. Uh, they were actually paying two stipends. Um, they were paying 7000 for the uh, treasurer's position. There was another 1500 that they were paying for an assistant treasurer. Um, in case the treasurer was out, somebody to sign checks, I don't believe we've ever used that person. Uh, so there is really no need for an assistant um, treasurer. Uh, what we do need is a second body to be able to sign checks in an emergency, and the auditors have said that's perfectly fine for, for Robin to do. Um, you know, again, if the board, board is willing in terms of that structural change. Uh, they also made the, the, the point, which was interesting, is that in most cases it is the business manager who is also the, the oh, really? the school officers, which was, yeah. Oh, is that legal then? Seems like you'd want more separation. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I don't. Yeah, it just doesn't. It, it doesn't sit right with me coming from mm -hmm. banking um, myself. Um, so I, I like the way that it's it's split. But again, um, the big thing with her is so that Robin's name is on the on the account so that she can sign checks um, in case Teresa is out. Well, it seems as if you can be six or nine months behind. You know, if she m misses one, if she's late a week. It wouldn't matter right yeah. you know so and she's very reliable so i couldn't i don't it doesn't seem like we need an assistant yeah robin told her it's only one time a month that you have to do it so you know if it's not this week it could be next yeah. it, and it's a it's a little bit bigger than a normal normal checkbook but i mean you know what you're signing off on, on those warrants it's basically the, the payables accounts it's what's coming out the itemized list in the summaries um, so it's basically balancing the checkbook once a month big one but still just a checkbook what do you guys think? Do you think we need an assistant? I don't think so. Yeah. Sounds like we're saving $1,500. Is there a, um, when we set up the district, is there a legal requirement in our incorporation that would make it so that we'd have to? I can go back and I'll double check, but I do remember reading the articles of incorporation. I don't remember there being Okay. I just wanted to make sure that there wasn't anything yeah. mentioned in there. I can't remember it either, but that doesn't mean. That mean. Oh, actually, no, I'll type it right in here. Did, in my notes. did you ask Petro about the appointing of uh, the treasurer if, if, since uh, the current one resigned? Is there any special thing we have to do? For instance, when we had a board member resign, we had to go through some. Yeah. So what we got back um, verbally, we don't have it in writing yet. For whatever reason, they were a little bit behind because all this happened in the last two, three days. Right. Um, as they said that this, the board can appoint, but they didn't give us the full details on what the process is. Right. Um, so you know, I believe if, as long as we do in good faith. Yeah, I, I think I'd like to see in, in writing, yep. or you see in writing, um, what Pedro's or his office's guidance is on what we can do just because there were a lot of loops. A couple of little steps. Yeah, yeah, there was steps and it doesn't seem like we would have those because it's not from an individual town. Yeah. Whereas right. the board members right. were in, so that uh, it, it feels like we should be able to just build a point in, but it I'm was, wondering if we have to open it for who wants to uh, who wants to be it, you know, like these kinds of things. I don't know. So the, think we do. the ar argument, only argument I would have is that um, we should be able, I'll find out tomorrow and I'll, I'll get it out to the board, um, is that because you are managing the system and right now we do not have somebody who can write those checks right. for payroll and things. That's, right. That's pretty urgent. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I feel, I have some confidence because she's already been appointed or voted right. Right. as of July 1st. Right. It just, you yeah. know. I agree. 
I you wouldn't want a worse. provisional or temporary no. person. No. Definitely not. But I will. I will. will check. Um, I'll, I'll put some pressure on him again tomorrow. So can we vote can to approve her appointment yeah. okay. in a provisional I way? I just in there. Pending some. Yeah. Kind pending. Of, yeah. Review yeah. by the legal right. counsel or right. whatever. Who is it? Teresa Godfrey. I'd like to make a motion to appoint Teresa Godfrey as the treasurer um, pending a conversation between Lane and Pedro's uh, Lynn Lynn and Blackman's uh, attorney. Do I have a second? I second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. So hopefully you can do that soon and we'll get her on board. Hopefully they can. Yeah, like I said, we had the we had the phone conversation. We were waiting for something written from them, which has not come in. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, next is uh, you know, monitoring. We have the facility plans and Raven update. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you're making some progress on <laughs> that. Um, so the Raven, um, we are moving forward and having the program take over the OSSD warehouse. Um, and on the demolition of the old Raven building. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be seeking a vote from the board um, tonight um, to have access to up to 600000 of the reserve funds for that work. We do not believe it will take 600000 um, but based upon kind of the initial magnitude estimates um, earlier, it's not, that's not putting us over what our first estimate was way back when. Right. Um, so, so we think that's well in line. It also looks, uh, don't quote me, um, that at the end of this year we will probably have between two and 300000 left in terms of the surplus to be able to apply to this before we even have to access the 600. Um, Dubois and King right now is generating the total kind of um, initial estimate. Um, we're meeting weekly every Friday afternoon, and we've got the team that comes in to, to figure out where we're at and what the next steps are. Um, so we got the fire marshal coming in this week to provide feedback, making sure the egresses are, are the way that they should be, um, and also to help us check out the um, ADA compliance. Um, there is an upper area, area up there which was intended to be turned into a conference room um, previously, um, which is ideal for a classroom, but it's only stairs. Um, so we've got to find a way to make that ADA compliant, either a lift or... Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. We've never had a student in the program that has needed it, but you, still, it's, it's a new building. Um, right. Yeah. Under the law, it, it should have been ADA compliant from, from when it was built. My question I have is uh, 600000 was the initial uh, quote we got. For a shell. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we're not building a shell. We're not building anything. Nope. And so my question is, is what, what exactly is needed? Uh, what, what is a more realistic expectation of how much is going to be spent? So we're trying to We'll start off on the demolition side. Um, can't imagine it's going to be more than 90. Um, actually, can't imagine it's going to be more than 50. So 50 is probably reasonable, but I, I don't want people taking that mm -hmm. verbatim until the Du Bois and King finishes sure. its uh, its assessment. Um, part of the the positive piece about that is that you know there was no asbestos found when we did the initial the initial survey of that building. Um, in terms of Raven itself, what you're looking at is you're looking at putting in a classroom space. Mm -hmm. um, you're looking at putting in a kitchen. You are looking at moving the heating system. Um, we've got a propane heater that's up there uh, in that conference loft um, that needs to be moved. Um, they've got to bring in uh, a lift. It looks like they're going to get the new lift that was never used from the tech center. Um, get that bolted in, have somebody look it over and make sure that it's safe. Uh, they're trying to decide if they need a second bathroom uh, for females. They have one unisex. They've got to figure out if it's enough. Um, they are also talking about um, chopping up the space a little bit on the inside so that they've got a place for their welding equipment, which is separate because you don't want people viewing the, I don't know, I can say the sparks, but the UV light that comes from the, from the, from the, yeah. the welding and just some st general storage um, for the kids. So there is some internal... There's some internal... Um, renovation going on, how much do we suspect that that might cost? If I were to throw my hat into the ring, again, without having the fire marshal yeah. say and, and on, on other parts and pieces, I might see 250. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're probably totally, total talking about 350. 
um, is my my best guess um, based upon reading the engineering reports and what was in there for you know the previous work we were looking at. And then my I guess the follow up question is is it premature to ask for six hundred? Why do we need to improve at this meeting six hundred thousand where? Uh, that was for a, basically a completely yeah. different project. So the intent isn't isn't to spend the whole six hundred thousand. Um, it's to prevent during crunch time um, having to come back to the board potentially waiting a month um, if we hit if we hit something that's unexpected. Um, there's also the piece that we've we've talked about, um, and it wouldn't necessarily have to happen this year, uh, but the footprint of that building is smaller. Um, not a lot, but it's a little smaller than the current Raven right. building. Um, and then the possibility, the possibility of laying down a slab and adding an addition to it, uh, which wouldn't be all that expensive. Wait a minute. The part, isn't the plan, the long term plan, is to then. Potentially. That's just a temporary. P potentially. And so here's, here's the, the strategy piece is right now in the legislative world. They are talking about taking the moratorium off of matching funds for work. Um, so the best thing to do is to get them up here, get them situated like it's permanent in case it is. Um, but if the moratorium on the matching funds for construction is removed, then that would be the ideal time to go and pursue rebuilding on that spot. We have no need for a, a building there. Uh, you know, that, that warehouse was, was pretty much unused. Um, it had four years of toilet paper that was stored in it. Um, I think Wes actually used it maybe once or twice a week back in the office area. Um, so it, it's not really serving a, a full purpose um, at this point in time. But it doesn't seem wise then to build, you know, a, we might as well just build one, you yeah. know, which we're right. doing now. Like why, I mean, I don't want to throw money into another building. No. Not unless, the, not unless there's a reason for it. If at some point in the future, given the number of trauma students that we have um, and the, that are, that's occurring in the other districts, it might be wise to build a bigger building. We may have need at some point in the future um, because of our growing population of autism students to, to put in a collaborative for autistic students. Yeah, I mean, that's, I think yeah, that would be down the line. Um, so we're basically we're going to get rid of that space over there, and really we should be thinking Raven is now going to be over on that yeah. section of the campus. Yeah. So are you going to? You had talked about sort of redoing parking or sort of rethinking how. So, so that'll be the next time we meet. Um, okay. Part of the work is if it, if Raven had stayed in that that same place. Um, they have an aging septic tank that's there that's 50, 60 years old that needs to be replaced. So the wise thing to do would be to connect a new building if it were going in there to city water and city sewer. Um, at the same time that they were proposing that work, um, they were going to extend the city water to um, RUHS because the original main feeder line um, for the building uh, was designed for when the building, before the building was added onto. I don't know how many years ago that was, so it's not quite supplying what it should. And so it seemed to you know it was best to try to you know, kill all those birds with one stone. Yeah. With OSSD Warehouse, um, that is already connected uh, to, 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 to city water. Um, so we've got that covered. Um, where Raven currently sits, right, it'll be demolished, it'll be leveled, it'll just look like grounds, uh, grass and planted and whatnot, would be the intent for now. And then at some point in the future, if we decide that, you know, we want to build something again there, we need to. Um, we already have all the, the, the soil survey and, and work done to be able to, to put the foundation in, the right orientation, we've done the water and, and drainage work and everything else that we need. Can you remind me how many kids are in the Raven program? Raven program uh, it typically sits around 14 or 15. Um, it has been as large as 18. Um, they always do have a waiting list. So one of the ideas was that if we were going to rebuild on site, make the building a little bit bigger to be able to take in the kids that were on the waiting list as well. Um, those students, they're part of a collaborative. They come from the seven sending districts that the, the tech center students uh, do. They pay tuition to go there. Um, but the biggest benefit for us in having the program is we average having three, or three to four kids um, in that program each year, and it saves us about a million dollars every seven to nine years as opposed to sending them out on public transportation. So I'm assuming there's probably a square footage that has to be followed 
per student. So we said that we're downsizing. So does the pro what impact does that have on the not, not on the current sizes. Not on the current sizes. So it could be able to continue to be run the way that it is. If we want to build on, you know, an addition, that okay. that would help and that's one of the ideas behind it. Um, so they're looking at those parts and pieces. So to get back to your original question, so we talked a little bit about the there's the loading dock behind the school um, that needs to be replaced. It's dangerous uh, the way that it is. And there's also the paving that needs to be done uh, behind the school and around the side. And so that's rough estimate right now is 160000 for those two. Um, so they're getting the final estimates on that. And at that point in time, they may come back to the board and say, hey, from the reserve funds, um, this would be a good project um, but those are separate so right. it seems to me that the 600 600,000 does seem like excessive if you're expecting more to be 350 yeah. you know if we in a month's time you would have a better idea if you needed more than the I'll have a we'll, we'll have a, a much better idea um, in terms of what we'll need because they're still kind of working on the, the blueprint and the internal changes and whatnot um, the one thing that we're working against is time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know what. I don't what think it's. You that. think? I, I so, mean, it, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just wondering if we approved 350 today instead of 600, um, would that prevent you from doing anything that you would have done if we approved 600 this month? I don't believe so. So if you ended up, if we get the report from Dubois between now and the next meeting, and you yep. need an additional, however much it ends up being, um, would that, I, I just feel odd giving, um, saying um, we should approve 600,000 right. when it doesn't look like it's gonna be anywhere near 600,000. Uh, again, I don't know all the ins and outs and could yeah. be my best option. Yeah, right. Yeah. right. There's also the, the, the point too that I talked a little bit with, uh, with Jim on who runs the program is this idea, well, if we're coming over, um, do we want those 60-year-old tables that are falling apart or should we buy new furniture? Should we? So there's, that's, that's part of the piece. I don't know what those costs would be in the end. Um, and yeah. That was part right. of the reason for having a little bit higher. But that wouldn't be 300000 Well, Hopefully. I mean, I guess, and those tables. funds could come later. I mean, I, it's not, yeah. I mean, I. No, but piecemeal is, is, is fine too if we need to. Um, my guess is, is my hope is, is that between the, the potential surplus that we've got at the end of this year, smaller than, than, than previous years, usually it was about four or four to five hundred thousand, it looks to be two to three hundred. Between that and the 350, it may probably will cover everything. That's my hope. Again, I don't know for sure on the demolition costs. We have a rough, rough estimate, you know, we're thinking, thinking 50, but we're not sure. So, I mean, next month, if we need 160000 for the loading dock and the parking, yeah. you know, that would be another time we should vote on, you know, whether we want to release the yeah. surplus funds for those projects. Works for me. Okay. Um, I, it, feel free. I'm, I'm just throwing there's, my there's, ideas there's, out. There's 3.8 million, just so folks know, between yeah, 3.5 and 3.8 mm -hmm. in the, the facilities surplus. Yeah, please. I agree. Rain it's counts. harder to put money in the reserve than it is to take it out. Right. Yep. In order to put money back in there, we're <clears> going to have to have everybody vote. And have the surplus. That's, that's, and so it's easier for us to say, yes, you can take this money, here you go. But it's harder for us if, say, we give you 600000 and only use 300, then we're going to have to add that into the what you're going to vote for to put into a budget. Mm -hmm. I think yep. I got you. Do you understand? Like, it, yeah, because we don't pull the we don't pull the six hundred thousand out though. We only use right. what we need up to, and okay. no crossing the line. Right. But once we've said you can spend this amount, doesn't that mean that that money is allocated for that, and we can't use it for anything else? Uh, potentially, yeah. Yeah. Right. And so, if we don't right. use it, then we have three hundred thousand dollars that right. is now allocated for something that we can't. We're, we, we're not going to spend it on. Oh, I see what you're saying. And mm -hmm. so we'll have that to vote makes, to put it back in. Makes good and sense. So it's easier for us to. Say here's a check or here's your new budget three hundred thousand. Oh, you need three hundred more. Here's yeah. three hundred. But it's much harder for us to put it in because we'll have to wait till March to vote for it to go back. Right. Yep. Yeah, that's good. Yep. Yeah, I never thought about it. That's the that's the only reason why I'm cautious on saying well yeah take six hundred thousand. No, and again I I can't. My gut is it's not going to be anywhere near yeah. six. You know, right. 
don't think so either. Based and on so, and three hundred thousand would get you a good, really good start. Because you keep referring to we that was that was the original way back when yeah. we talked about creating a new Raven yeah. program. That okay. was the the, po right. the number okay. of okay. folks. So yeah. who's putting this together? Isn't it the facilities guys? This piece here. Yeah. Yeah. So they're saying six hundred still. Again, part of it is we don't have a total number right now on the potential cost of like if we redid the furniture for the kids, if, if we you know, yeah, started new for them. Um, so what they were trying to do is they just wanted to be able to run, get the work done, uh, make sure that the kids were up and running if it were at all possible by the by end of August. Um, of course. But, which makes sense, but Paul's argument is very good. So are you only asking for money for Raven from surplus? The rest is in budget? Right now, yeah. Okay. okay. Now, if we may come back and, and talk about the paving and the, um, the loading dock, but that will have firm estimates on it. Okay. Okay, so funds requested is just from the regular maintenance budget, facilities maintenance budget. Say that again. He has... Oh, you're looking this, at this the, pro, this yeah, I haven't even moved over to that yet. Okay. So sorry about that. So what they did, so they have this funds requested. That this has changed since the report was printed. Um, they've been working overtime uh, in terms of all the maintenance and things that hadn't been done for years. Um, there's been exceptional costs associated with that, so they've been doing all the critical things that have needed to be done. Uh, they bring in Visbit. Uh, Visbit has done uh, a survey, uh, an audit with them um, just a short while ago and said these things where it says funds requested, these are all the things, um, actually the first eight on here were things that they identified as, as needing to be done to be up to code. So like, uh, not, not including the Raven, so balance the hot water, balance of hot water uh, heaters and tanks, um, the circulators for the domestic hot water, the six mixing valves. Um, the paving and the loading dock repair, which we've talked about a little bit, um, the basketball goals, uh, and then the replacement repair of the fitness room equipment. Some of that work has already been done. Um, so these are things that Visbit has identified as, as we need to have done to be up to code. So they originally came when, when we had our, our meeting, our weekly meeting, and said, well, we'd like you to put this in front of the board for approval so we can get the work done now. Robin and I pulled them back and said, well, wait a minute, you know, we're giving you $217 extra thousand dollars next year um, to, to help out with some of this. Is any of it critical? Does it need to happen now or can it wait? Mm. Um, so right now what's happening is all of this, with the exception eventually of the, the paving and the loading dock, okay. um, is going to be addressed in, in next year's budget. And then if they run out of money doing that work at that point in time, then we might consider coming to the board and saying, hey. Okay. We did what we could. But they, they've done a, a significant, a tremendous amount of work this year. Um, a lot of it on HVAC. Like I said, there was a lot of maintenance that wasn't done um, for years. So they had a lot of parts that needed to be replaced. Um, a lot of work that still needs to be done. And they did a tremendous amount of work in plumbing. Um, they were replacing hot water heaters and uh, a heat storage tank, probably a couple hundred thousand dollars worth because um, when they put them in, three, four years ago, they weren't plumbed right. And they had the hot going into the cold, cold going into the hot, that sort of nonsense, and it just it, it well, burned them out. that's delightful. Me. So I have just a, a question about this format and the way the information is being presented. Yep. Um, I appreciate this estimate, and then we have a cost, mm -hmm. but there's no indication that with these projects that are completed, what the estimate was or what the cost turned out to be. So again, I'm not sure, like with governance policy, but I would say with financial oversight, for us to be confident in the way that these are being estimated to us and actually coming in at a cost, yep. um, where does that fall? Yeah, so we should have that. So if you, go, if you go to the very last page, um, and we'll talk, talk about why it's here for some and not here for the other, you'll see that that is, is in there. Um, one of the reasons is because we started this up and we were reporting when we started this up, I think it was partially through the year, um, and it was something that Brooke wanted to make sure that we did. We were following along with the format that Mark used, Mark McKinstry. Um, we started to add in the costs and the estimates as we were moving forward. Some of this was looking back. And so you, you just don't know. We do. We can go back and get it if you want. Yeah. yeah, I think that's, that's good. a good okay. information. That'd be good. Right, and I just think, yeah, it's consistent. And, and the stuff on here is not not 
all stuff that was asked out of surplus. This is just out of the regular budget, just mm -hmm. to be clear for the new, new folks. So I'll have them go put that in. Okay, that'd be great. I had actually requested it previously, but. Are we, I, are, you, are you, are um, you, are we spending more than we had been in the past? I mean, you're saying all of this stuff was done and it was done improperly. Are we, are we now going back and spending much more than we did in the past? Did I can answer. I can answer the question, but you probably won't like the won't like the answer. There was a tremendous amount of work that was reported having been done that wasn't done. Okay. And you will also notice if you think back over the last year and a half. Um, that in terms of surplus funds uh, from this board, um, the only thing that we've asked for was transportation, was for the two buses, and we ended up not having to take money from that um, surplus fund after we requested it because the money that we earned from the kids, uh, the school choice kids, isn't more than enough to cover. Did we do a roof fund a roof not request? With me. That was prior to me. Okay. So we have not, you know, we've, we've done pretty darn well with what we've had, but the expenses are much higher um, just because of the maintenance piece. One of the reasons for putting in that 217000 that was extra was because that was bringing us more in line facilities-wise with what the actual costs were. That will probably reduce in about two to three years um, because there's a lot of old maintenance that wasn't done. Okay. If we get caught up on it, then we can pull back a little so bit. So I want to know, what are you putting in place so this doesn't happen again? Because we're a lay board, we meet once a month. Yep. We need to know that you have a system in place so that we don't get caught with this again. True. Yep. So tell us a little bit about that. For first thing I'd like to do is get rid of this report. Again, this is not the format or the... Mm -hmm. What would, you, what would you recommend for a format that would be something that we would get the same information or similar information? Yeah. And it would so I had done way back when we first started, when the request came in to start you know, following through on the reports that, that Mark um, right. had been doing, um, I had started off with a summary report. And there was a narrative associated with each new piece. So each new budget thing that hit this month was in a summary report. Told you the amount, the estimated amount, the cost, where it was in the progress, exactly what it was going towards. Um, and I think that would be much better. The other thing that we could do is add another column on to the side where after it's done and it's come in at cost and it's been paid for, the business manager can put little initials next to it that, that, that it's been confirmed. Uh, because that's the piece I think that was missing. Um, there was a lot of coming to the board for, for, for surplus funds as well, um, but I don't think there was a lot of confirmation on where it actually went. Well, that, that would still be an issue, right? Because we're not going out and making sure that the plumbing was done correctly or that, you know, but business, business. we received something, you know, because, yeah. so who is doing that? Obviously, Robin's not doing that. That would be part of the, the business manager's job as part of that reconciliation. Well, I'm, happy, reconciliation I'm happy to do I mean, it too, but you, you know, it, it comes down to that. In the end, no matter who we have checking it, it's going to come down to trust. I'm not saying the monetary reconciliation only, but also, oh, no. you know, you know, inspecting the work done or yep. the, you know, that sort of follow through, which is not just monetary. Right. The hot water being piped into cold water, for example. Right. Or whatever else, yeah, you know. Else. It, it, I think it demands some there. sort of technical expertise in some, well, in some ways. So part, part of the problem, so if, and again, I'm thinking my way through it with you. Sure. Because usually if you have a contractor that comes in from the outside, does the work, if there's a problem, you call them up, they come back and fix it. Right. Cool. The problem was is that there was, again, based upon what I was seeing going through the old records, was that money was requested for things, the work was then done in-house, and it was done incorrectly, so there was nobody to go back on. That is a, a function, you know, that... It was obvious. It was obvious in the records of me looking at it. It should have been obvious in the records of anyone else looking at it. Okay, so was Robin not following that line of follow through then, or who's Robin at that point in time was matching invoices with 
dollar amounts, mm -hmm. not checking if the work was done, not her responsibility that would fall on facilities and then on the superintendent above them. But we're still having a lot of work done in-house. And so we still have that same... It's, all, it's pretty much all contracted out. I mean, you've got the, the, the general work orders that come in that don't really cost a whole heck of a lot. A door needs to be repaired. I mean, we had 359 of them in the last three months. 311 of them were, were, were completed. So there's, there's a tremendous amount of that. But right now, most of the work on the systems, the big stuff, is contracted. I mean, that okay. was one of the reasons why we were looking for the HVAC person mm -hmm. um, to come in, because we were spending so much contracting those services out, and it was an immediate need, given the, the state of things, that it was cheaper to have somebody come in and do it. Um, but that's one of the reasons that we brought him in. Um, that's a person, um, and I, I'll check with Visbit. I'll get a recommendation from them. Um, that's a person that Visbit could check because they come in and do our, our audits. I mean, the information that we have on whether things are up to code or not right mm. now is coming from Visbit. Mm. So, but I, I'll find out from them. But again, you're asking questions that politically it's tough for me to answer. I mean, if you want to go into executive session, I'll lay it all out for you. But. Um, just because it deals deals with personnel. Personnel, right. Yeah. All right, so. Other questions? So I, I, steps I moving just, forward. I would just still say that, I mean, there is a, tr I mean, thinking back to the old structure, we had superintendent who's in charge of the whole system. He hires his facilities managers. He's got things in place, or she's got things in place, whoever it is. There's, there's got to be a system, but it, so that you know, I mean, you're not an HVAC expert. Um, so, and I'm assuming that, I mean, I don't think we can go around figuring, you know, we don't want to be so cumbersome that, oh, well, our, our, the person that we hired to be a facilities manager is going to not know what they're doing, and they're just going to, hitch things up improperly and, and tell you, oh yeah, everything's going fine. I mean, I don't know how much your plumbing knowledge is, but um, I mean. Good, good enough to know if the paperwork matches. <laughs> <laughs> right, but, but I don't think that was the issue. I don't think there was right. a paperwork issue. I think it was more from what you're saying, things were not done properly. Thing, things were not done properly there is also ample evidence to suggest that the paperwork was being falsified. So that comes down to, I don't care about the, I just want to know the system. So how are we to make sure, or not we, because we're meeting once a, <laughs> once a right. month. We yep. can't be, you're, you're responsible for the system. So. What are you putting in place so that doesn't happen under your watch? So, so first off, making sure that they're going out to bid when they should. Um, making sure that if there's questions when I sit down weekly with Bob and Wes right now, um, and it doesn't sound right, I call in Robin for a second set of eyes like I did with the funding request that were here. It didn't make sense to me. Like one of the pieces that they were asking for, I'll give you a perfect example if it's on here, is they were asking for 30000 for HVAC work, uh, 35000 for HVAC work. And so the question is, well, geez, if we're hiring somebody on July 1st to do this work, why do you need 35000 from them? So that was the process that I used to kind of weed through with this. I just said it's not, I talked with them. It's not sitting well with me. These are the things that don't make sense. I want you to check it too. And so that's the reason you're not getting a request for this. Um, this, this meeting um, is because we followed through. But again, there is that, that piece of trust uh, there. Um, I will check with Visbit. Um, that'll be, we'll do a, a report at the next meeting and find out what their suggestions are. I don't worry as much um, if it's an outside service coming in and doing the work. Um, it's easy, easy to track paper. It's easy to know it's done. If it's not done to quality, you can get, get them to fix it. I worry more about in-house work. So the HVAC, uh -huh. HVAC piece will be the we did do a lot of in-house mm -hmm. under the impression that that was going to save us mm -hmm. a lot of money. If mm -hmm. we do it in-house, then we don't have to go out to bid, yep. and we have control. And I'll work. I'll work on this. A little, I'll work on the the reporting piece a little bit to make it a little bit clearer um, for folks. Again, I was just we were just trying to follow along with how Mark had done it in the past. Um, was the request? 
but there's lots of other ways to, to present it. Um, I just want to make sure that, yep. I mean, th there's got to be a system in place. You've got to feel comfortable with it because we can see things, but... It's just paper. It's paper with numbers on it. Yep. And you can tell me, oh, yeah, <clears throat> we've got this... And I mean, it's I, not pulleys and pipe, you know. We <laughs> right, and and to a certain extent, I'm not going to go around, you know, thinking you're trying to sneak something through. I mean, there's got to be a general level of trust among people, right. and I'm assuming that you have good intentions for what you want to do. Yep. Um, but I'm also, I would think, from your perspective that knowing that some stuff was done that was not done and not done correctly and now we were having to backtrack and fix, that you're thinking to yourself, hmm, I better have a system in place so that this doesn't occur yeah. in the future. And I did talk, I did talk with them a little bit about a, a materials audit and inventory, which they do have. Um, but part of that is this summer, as I've talked with them about going through and checking off on the list. Um, we also talked in the last month about uh, a surplus um, process. So in other words, if you've got an expensive item that's on that list um, and it's not needed anymore or it's defunct, in most cases, um, what something like that above a certain dollar amount does is it goes in front of the board. It gets put on a, gets put on a sheet. Um, People will write out what it is, what the what the cost is, and that way it's not officially removed from that materials list until the board has approved it. Being um, so part of it is you guys have to decide if you want to have that much input. Nothing wrong with it. It's normally what happens, um, and that would provide a little bit more in terms of the material control. Another thing I saw was not on this list that we had talked about. Um, I don't know before Christmas, I think, was um, installing solar panels at Braintree. Yeah. I just wondered where we are in that process. We had, we had uh, talked a little bit about it. They had gone out um, to Green Mountain Power. They had checked with Green Mountain Power to see if there is uh, capacity in the grid. So Green Mountain Power came back and said, um, Braintree, not yet. We're working on it, but they won't give us a timeline. Mm -hmm. um, the same thing is true for most places in Randolph right now. So the follow-up to that, and Robin has the, the contract, is, is reviewing it, was uh, Green Lantern Solar. So what Green Lantern is doing um, is they are building panels on the transfer station land, um, renting out to the town. Um, and what they do is they generate the power themselves and then they sell it at a discount. Um, so for us, uh, if they were able to supply the entire district, um, it would be about a $22,000 savings a year. Um, but is having that $22,000 savings a year worth signing into a minimum 20-year contract? Mm -hmm. So that's the piece that we're talking about. That's Robin question. and I have been, been kind of growing. Um, by the same token, if we were able to get the panels on um, Braintree, um, you know, those panels are good, you know, they, they reduce in capacity a, a little bit over time, but they, they're good for at least 40 years, you know, you'll still be at 80% 80 capacity, 80 capacity usually 40 years out. Um, you know, that'll save us 18000 a year. So, you know, what's the better? So that's kind of the, the, where the discussion is kind of sitting right now. But that would not entail selling the power to GMP, or why, why does GMP have to be um, involved? You said that they didn't have the capacity. Correctly. So they don't... What ends up happening with the power that's generated is if, if you think think of the entire grid across the across Vermont, it's probably an easy way to look at it. Just because we're generating the power at Braintree doesn't mean that Braintree is using it. It goes into the grid. Anybody who needs it uses it. The power company gives us a credit for the amount that we're using, and then we can pull that much out of the grid ourselves and not have to pay for I see. it. Well, because in the summer, we're not going to use hardly anything. But you generate so the you most. So you generate right? the most. Yeah. So it just it goes. It's expensive for Green Mountain Power. So the state legislature mandates how much they need to accept. 
Okay. And so they're probably right. I think what you're saying is they're yeah. right at that, and so they don't need to accept anymore, so they're not going to accept anymore. I mean, so they, that means we don't have the option. We that don't have that option yeah. right now, but they've said part of it, too, is infrastructure. You know, do the wires, do, 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 does the electrical get in that specific area, can it handle that additional however many kilowatt hours of, of power that was going to be generated? And so the impression I got was it was more a grid yeah, it is. piece that they don't, it's they physically don't have the physical structure for Right, it. and that's where the cost comes from. They have to set that in order to receive yeah. more, they have to set it up, and so they don't want to do it because it's the yeah. cost cuts into their right. Yeah. Okay. So that one has been the, the brain tree piece is just sitting there because there's no answer. It's so Green Mountain Power come, comes back and says yay, yay or nay. Mm -hmm. um, and again, they have not given a timeline. The other one that was being investigated in the interim was the Green Lantern. Okay. So are you requesting then today um, the, the approval of these reserve expenditures then? Uh, let's, I would be, yes, I would, um, but it would go with Paul's suggestion with the 350. Okay. For the Raven, or is it for Raven and other? Uh, just, that's strictly for, for Raven, um, working on upgrading the OSSD warehouse and the demolition of the old building. All right, I'd like to make a motion of uh, expending $350,000 for the Raven project. From the facilities reserve. Oh, so, yeah, sorry. From the facilities reserve, as described by Lane. Is there a second? So moved. Any further discussion on this? All right. Um, is there a, a vote to approve um, the motion as described? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. All right. Run with it. We look forward to lots of progress. Big, big thing is how long the permitting may take. We're trying to fast track the permitting. Yeah, that sounds fun. All right, uh, next is advocacy, <laughs> seeing as we have no community comment. Um, legislative update? Uh, a couple. So S40, um, which is the, the Senate bill um, to require lead testing. Uh, we actually were able to meet with the, some of the senators and a lot of the folks from the House um, at lunch. The superintendents were able to do that at our last conference. So the last wording that I had on it was they were looking at a, a threshold of three parts per billion um, for lead. So they want to go out and they want to test all the taps in all the public schools across the state. They want to have the testing done and the results back in 60 to 90 days and the work done this year if the mediation needs to happen. Wow. Wow, that's a lot. The uh, EPA, <laughs> the EPA um, threshold is 15 parts per billion. Uh, they're looking for three. Uh, I think we spoke about this before here, um, is that in a natural system, whenever you get close to a limit, zero being the limit here, it gets exponentially more expensive mm -hmm. to do the work uh, to get it done. So this is potentially a very expensive um, project at, at three parts per, per billion across the state. Um, one of the big outcries that happened um, shortly after those discussions was this idea, well, heck, if you're expecting us all to get it done you know, within a year and you're expecting districts to pay for 50% of it and our budgets are already set mm -hmm. and costs may be astronomical because you chose uh, something that's you know, a, a third or, or, or even less than a third of what the EPA recommends, you know, you're going to put us in a, a pretty bad bind. You know, if we got a $19 million budget that comes mm -hmm. in, we got to do six or seven million dollars worth of remediation. Doesn't seem to be too logical here. Right. Um, so that's kind of where the discussion uh, ended at that point in time. Is that then? I mean, the house had a more, I don't know, lenient sort of limit, didn't they? Than three percent. It was they higher. They did, and I'm not sure in the last round since that time what's happened. Um, the house was great. They were actually coming and listening to folks and listening to all the mm -hmm. parts and pieces. The Senate was just kind of doing its thing. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's that's the norm, but that's kind of what it felt like. So maybe there will be some moderation of that extreme limit. Yeah. And then the, the other piece that, that uh, the superintendents were, were pushing for with them is, look, if you're going to mandate this, especially when, you know, lead is bad, but when there's not a crisis, if you're going to mandate this, then the, then the state should be funding it. Yeah. Um, was the push, because there were no kids um, 
in the state that were having problems with lead from drinking water in the schools. Um, the ones that had a problem, actually, when they did the research, they went back and found out it was from lead paint in the homes. So they did have uh, 30, 40, 50 kids that, that had lead problems, but it was from lead paint in the homes. Um, the bill on ethnic and social... So where is the push for this one coming from? Or is it just because of Flint and public health? I think what ended what ended up happening. And I'm I'm using other people's words because you know my question kept coming. Where is the emergency here? Where is the emergency here? Because I don't I'm not aware of what happened to drive people in this direction. Um, what they said is that they had those 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 kids that, that had lead poisoning, so they jumped on the bandwagon to check check all the water in the schools before they figured out that it, you know, did the research behind the scenes to find out well it wasn't coming from the schools. It was from lead in the home. Which is not. But shy. now you've got the special interests uh, working on the legislature that's going to make tons and tons of money off this. That's pushing, pushing, pushing. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yes, the, I, I think they said they had seven to nine different special interest groups that were there, really putting the hammer on things. Seems to me that the money would be better spent if they took a, a third of what they're talking about and saying any home in the state of Vermont that wants to like has like mm, remediate like, it. I know. Six, six million dollars a pop of school, and that's all it's going to cost. Me. Yeah, if your kid tests positive for lead, you'll come and remediate your home. <laughs> it might be cheaper. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we, you know, to kind of talk about us here, um, you know, the one issue that we've had to hit on and off has been Brookfield. The last testing came back clean. Um, so what was that one? So we, you got that tested. So where are we? Is it at the three that they're saying that it has to be at? The three parts we want to know. Uh, if I gave, I think the number was around seven or eight, so it's under the EPA threshold. But it wouldn't be, it wouldn't meet the new state one if it was at the three. No. So, so it's well under EPA, but not well under EPA where the state wants it. And um, part of you know one of the funding requests because they have been scrambling around trying to because they're looking at so many different pieces as you see one of that that funding request was thirty thousand potentially in case they need to do the lead remediation um, they have had folks come in and take a look um, apparently there is one line that comes into the school that may be the source um, after they replaced all the faucets which which solves some of the, most of the other problems. Um, and the best way to remediate it is, I can't think of the name of the chemical, um, but basically what they do is they get the water out of the line, they run the chemical through there and it coats the, the pipe. Um, so that now there's no more problems, there's nothing that can leach from the pipes. Um, but then, so you, you got the, the estimate on that, if we have to do it, is 30 grand. Chemistry is, wow, amazing, yeah. fun. So, um, exactly. Ethnic and social studies, uh, the, the bill on ethnic and social justice studies was passed by both House and Senate, um, and so hopefully we'll get some, you know, if the governor signs it, we'll get some information from the state on how to implement it. Um, that typically tends to be a weak point as they feel that, oh, we're Vermont, we're independent, everybody wants to figure out how to do it on their own without our help, so go for it. In the bills that, that were passed by both the House and Senate, was there, was there funding in either one of those? Uh, no. Never is. No, we actually, one of the things that I was pushing, I, I don't think I upset too many people, but, but I kept harping. I said, if you want to do something really good is, is put a moratorium on more mandates to education. There are some things that they, they put on us that are huge, like those uh, proficiency-based graduation requirements and standards-based report cards that literally would take 10 years to get up and running well. And yet, instead of giving us time to do that, they keep adding more and more stuff. And so the best thing they could do is for three to five years, just let us complete the work on, on the yeah, stuff they've already given us. Yeah, that's never going to happen. Yeah, it's a, it's a shame. <laughs> um, uh, so implementation of the statewide e-finance software um, is scheduled to go into effect across the state July 1st, 2020. Um, there were a lot of issues with it. They were trying to consolidate um, all the financial software that the districts use so that it commun communicates better with the state system. Right. Um, there were two districts that were supposed to be up and running by July 1st and the software just isn't there um, and they have no interest in actually extending the deadlines despite that. Um, so there's a, a bit of a fight going on um, between the AOE, the um, education. Wait. So the software secretary. doesn't exist. Yeah, it's there, but it's not. They, they were supposed to have these two districts up and running months ago. They're not. And the software doesn't appear to be in a complete enough state to do what it's supposed to. That's um, good. And so, but Real they're still, still forcing it. Um, basically, the discussion. Um, 
at the AOE with the secretary there um, was basically this. Well, I've talked with the software vendor. They say it's good to go. So we'll see. So we'll see. Um, statewide longitudinal data system, um, that status is unknown. Um, basically, it's part of the accountability to the federal government to get our federal grants money. We get about four to 500,000 um, in title funds each year, which is a part of this. To get that, we have to be able to supply them with accountability data, SBAC, mm -hmm. um, to show them that we're following through on, on what's required to get that money. Um, the state for a long time was trying to pull together uh, a centralized system that everybody was using for the reporting of data just to make it easier for the state to collect and be able to ship it off to the federal government. Again, it's a system that's not up and running, um, yet the data was due to the, the state months ago. Um, they have a soft estimate of maybe sometime in May. Um, so I don't know what that means in terms of, of, of grant funding from the federal government for us for next year. Um, S209 we talked a little bit about in terms of Raven if we were going to rebuild. Um, that's the one that's seeking to remove the moratorium on matching funds for school construction. Um, so they're still discussing that. It looks like it's got some traction and the reason that it does is because it's an equity issue. Wealthier towns can afford to renovate and upgrade their buildings where poorer ones cannot. Um, and so it looks like that one very well may pass. Um, again, so it makes sense if we were ever going to rebuild on that rate instead of holding it off until, until that comes to pass. Um, the big main focus at this point in time um, is on Act 173, which was previously passed um, in previous legislative sessions, and that's the changeover of special education funding um, in the state from their current reimbursement system um, to a block grant system. Um, one of the big things about it is the state's been charged in the law of providing support to districts to help with the transition. Um, they are just starting to talk about the fact that they've got to get this done and it should be up and running at some point in time. Well, we had transition. that transition training, didn't we? Or we, I, mean, I thought we were part of that pilot. There was a pilot program to collect data on terms of what is what went in to inform the law. So they had that DMG study where they went around to different schools, took a look at how schools were using their special education funds and the services they were providing to be able to report back to the legislature to say, hey, this is what looks like it's really working. This is what you want to include in your law. So that's what that was a part okay, of. Okay, so that was not helping yeah. us. Now, they've got some Use parts. In I thought it was like, I thought it... It, it, it came back with the recommendations for the law, um, which they've incorporated. Um, but in terms of training, it's actually getting people to come in and say, okay, if you're going to use this system with best practice, this is what it looks like in your schools, and we'll, we'll provide some training for your teachers, and we'll provide some coaching and, and whatnot. Um, again, the law said that they are supposed to be doing that. They are not quite up to speed. They should be, hopefully, by midsummer, by the sounds of things. Um, but one of the problems is, is that um, access to those services is going to depend upon what they call accountability status. So in other words, if they can ever collect the data from everybody to say who's doing well and who's doing poorly, they're going to target those that are doing poorly to get the lion's share of the help from the state. But they don't have a way of doing that yet until they get that, that data up and running. Um, so there'll be a lot, of, a lot of motion on that front because that's coming pretty, pretty fast. Um, so those are the biggies. Thank you. All right, so we've got next the consent agenda. Um, we'll vote on it as a whole slate. So uh, it includes the minutes from the um, OSSD meeting, our last one um, in March. Also the annual meeting, uh, March 4th. I thought we approved those last time in our... They weren't in there because that's about when I broke my arm. Okay. So they weren't in there. So <laughs> All I right. I better give them to you this time. Okay, so we'll approve yeah. both of those last um, minutes. We've got the professional staff contracts. Um, what is that? I signed all that. Yeah. We just need to approve them. That's, um, it's before mm -hmm. the new contract goes into um, to force. Mm -hmm. So it's just their steps if they get a step. And it's a, so all the teachers will be sent next year's contract. Professional non-renewal list. 
What is that? Yeah, one, one person. Okay. Um, I don't know if we just have to remove that. And... The board, yeah, it's like the teacher's contracts by April 15th, they have to be notified. Right. Uh, they either have to have a contract in the hand or a statement that they're not being they're renewed. They're not being renewed. And so that's just to make sure the board does have to approve non-renewals. Okay. Um, all right, so we have, we have all the contracts, one non-renewal, and then uh, the staff collective bargaining agreement, which we've already discussed and agreed to have moved to the part of the consent agenda. Any changes or substitutions on either of those minutes? Any questions or discussion about anything on the consent agenda? All right, so do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as described? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Reports and incidental information. Um, Lane's report was included here. Anything to add? Uh, I thought it was uh, interesting. A lot of the yeah. lot of the discussion was around around Brookfield and the, the three elementary principals. Right. Um, it sounded from their report that they were not happy. thrilled with this. No. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we can. There are some personnel issues associated with it, so if we go into executive session, I think it might okay. be more appropriate. Okay. <clears throat> um, financial report we can talk about since it's part of the reports and the dentals. So for food services um, was one of the ones that, you know, it always looks horrible. I think it was, you know, 67000 in the hole. Okay. Always looks that way um, this time of the year. We are actually $8,000 better than we were this, this time last year. Um, and we did end in the black last year in terms of food services. Um, tuition, um, in terms of what's coming in from our school choice students, is actually 175,000 over what was expected. Um, right now, um, the preschool program at Braintree uh, may break even um, wow. if we take into account, you know, the the amount that the parents are paying for the extended day childcare as well as the after school program. Um, we do not need to transfer any money from the Transportation Reserve Fund to pay for the two new buses. Um, we, that was the one request in my time here that we asked from the board. Um, and uh, we won't need to do that with uh, the money that's left over at the end of the year. Um, the big piece is that, you know, facilities is going to be uh, 35000 to 50000 in the red uh, by year's end. And a lot of that is just kind of what we talked about. Um, it's repairing, replacing those water heaters, those storage tanks, the plumbing work that went along with it, um, and then as well as the critical HVAC repairs. Um, I mean, you, as, as most of you probably saw with the big broadband email that went out, you know, we had to evacuate the school here um, last week, and that was one of the HVAC issues. Nothing caught on fire or burned, but one of those shunting valves um, associated with the heating unit on this end burned out and when that happens you get all sorts of ozone and fumes and whatnot. Oh, delightful. Um, and, and have to replace it and get it up and down. So part of it. What um, is this idea B flow through? That looks like we're 76,000. We're just waiting well. for reimbursement, um, special education reimbursement, so individual, individuals with disabilities and education act okay. money. Yeah, because we're still under the reimbursement system. There are some things that we pay for up front, and at the end of the year, we get back. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is the timeline for the kids who have school choice who could choose Randolph? When do we know those numbers? I already passed. And I, I so was, the lottery was done, and so I okay. can give them to you. No, no, I'm wondering not about our kids that are leaving. I was curious about like the Chelsea kids. You know how we saw that. Do we have what's the outreach to those other schools that could send yep. the students here? And when do we know how many are coming? So it's been been happening all year. Okay. Um, the outreach, especially the the open house that they they had over there, we were all there. Um, we also have been doing ongoing anyone who wants to come in tour the building. Uh, we've been putting ads in the paper we have over the course of this year to do that. Um, so they've connected directly up with the high school um, to have, have that happen. Um, I've asked the principals to reach out especially to the homeschoolers um, this year 
Um, so they're in their process of doing that to see if they want to, you know, come back at least part time um, because they can come part time. They don't have to be full time. But the uh, the work with the the outreach has been ongoing. Um, it's around the clock. And so when do we know, or is that I mean, do you not know until the new school starts? What's like the commitment from? Oh those no, students? it's it's already there. We're up an additional seven kids from what we had last year. Which comparatively, and I, I'm gonna, I can pass this around because it's kind of interesting to see we're actually doing better than most of the districts out there. Um, so right now we're up seven more, um, 16,000, 17,000 per kid. Um, so it adds up pretty quick. It's actually we, we get more revenue um, from school choice kids than we do from having our own in town. Okay. Um, what was interesting, and I'll, I'll pass this around for people to take a look at because it's, uh, I think it's probably one of the neater performance measures to take a take a peek and see and I'll explain it to you once everybody's got one. <clears throat> so if you take a look at the list, um, this tells you how many students are already have already left Randolph um, Union High School under school choice, um, and how many this year asked to leave. Um, so we had one that is what they call a continuing it out, was already out, is continuing to do so. We had two new requests. If you take a look at that list, we're one of the best schools in terms of retaining our students. So the 20, the number out per board, that's just as many as we allow, correct? Yep. So we allow 20 and only one. Um, one out, one is already out, has been out, and then there, and you guys actually know who that person yeah. is because you voted on her. Right. And then uh, two additionals this year. If you take a look at Stowe, Stowe's the only one that beat us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's Stowe. And Williamstown, actually, we're a little better than Williamstown. And they are about our size. Mm -hmm. Well. So we are retaining our students, and like I said, we're up an additional seven over the ones that we had last year. Good. <clears throat> Yeah, the biggest, it was, I was hoping it was going to be a little bit bigger. The biggest shift was, was last year because a lot of the, the local high schools had closed down. And so we, we got a, a good chunk of students from that. And now you've got the year where people are kind of settling in. They've decided where they're at. Do they want to stay there uh, to finish up their, their high school careers or not? So I think things will level off after this year. Yeah. And the new kids coming next year are from a variety of places? Yeah, I've got a, I shot an email out to, because I just got the lottery um, information a day or so ago, so I sent out an email to, to Cara and Dad, so mm -hmm. I'm waiting to hear from them, Great. and I'll forward it to you guys okay. as soon as I get it. All right, um, anything else on financials? That wasn't unless, really on financials. Not unless there's, especially, so that the, the flow through, like I said, is the, is the reimbursement. Yep. A lot of those students are also placed here by the state. So when they place them here, we pay up front, but then the state actually reimburses us 100% for those oh, guys. Oh, okay. So. All right, uh, staff appreciation. Every year we send a platter around to each of the different schools and then bus drivers and facilities, yep. uh, workers and, and that kind of stuff, and we call it staff appreciation. And every year I've arranged it for the last, I don't know, four years, two mm -hmm. years. At least. I don't know. It's been a while. <laughs> and um, I'm looking to have somebody shadow me this year, and then hopefully next year um, uh, they would take over. But essentially, um, it's me. I, all I do is send an email to the uh, culinary arts um, a director in RTCC, and then um, we talk about here what he has offered. Usually I, we, we have gone with whatever his students want to make is what they're going to uh, do because they, they're they going to make it and they have fun doing it and so um, whatever they want to make that year and then they make it and then he arranges for it to be delivered to all the different locations so from our point of view from what I've done it's, it's simple all I do is contact Linda as for the current numbers of employees where and then following that up with the culinary arts and we, we, we write cards, too. Yeah, you know. yep. card, we do cards, yeah. sign cards and stuff That's here right. at the meeting. Yep. And so Linda, again, usually does the job. Yeah, it's me reminding 
did, uh, uh, I think one year I signed it. I was the only one that signed it because we didn't remember the card. And so it <laughs> well, was me coming good. in and signing the card. Oh, no. May. I'm putting that on there. <laughs> <laughs> so is someone willing to shadow Paul and take over this job next year? I would be happy to do it. That's right. what I do. All right. <laughs> so just CC you on, 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 on the several emails. Yeah. Call Thank you, Ashley. Awesome. It's usually actually a presentation from last year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Samples and stuff. I would oh, just samples. Yeah. You know, I've never asked for samples. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever we like it, come on in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I need any samples. From there. <laughs> so, is there a reason why we don't deliver it? Like, that we aren't the ones that actually They do it during the day. We have so done it. We have done it. And yeah. I, I know when, I've, uh, when we've asked, uh, everybody's working, and so we haven't. Um, it's just because it's in the middle of the yeah. school day. And so if you're, so what we can do is have it arranged because they, they, they will tell us which day they're going to do it. And um, so we'll ask Wayne which day he would like it delivered. And then he will usually give us a couple of days for the principals want this day and this day. And then Wayne will pick one and then we make it happen. And so we can let everybody on the board know yeah. this date, this yep. time, and then whoever's and available. Angelo used to drive it. Yeah. I, I drove it once, but. Mm -hmm. Um, we usually have all everyone done on the same day, so yeah. we'll do it. And like the bus drivers, I think, are the first ones or the last ones. I forget which, but they're either really early or really late. Yeah. As long as we remember them. <laughs> yeah, they prefer not to be forgotten. <laughs> so the, but now the culinary program does all of that? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, the students the have been doing the, the driving. Mm -hmm. Wow. The students do the delivery. The, yeah. See, I, I think that's a great... I agree. Learning experience, yeah. you know. Yeah. Part of food service. Yep. Right. Catering and delivery. Here you go. We've been doing that for several. It's good. I think it's good. Have a good. So next is executive session.